All right, episode two, the guide life here. We are up on beautiful Lake Vermilion. Could be one of the most gorgeous lakes in the state of Minnesota, if not the whole country. I'm here today, I got my, uh, my roommate for the summer and fall, Justin Cromie. You're gonna get to know him a little bit more. He's brand new to our guide team. Uh, came on with us this year. Great fisherman, good fishing guide. He's learning, he's loving the lake. What's not to love about this lake? It's freaking beautiful out here. So, you know something? We are gonna go out today. It's a little bit overcast. Can't tell if it's overcast because of the clouds or the, uh, the smoke from coming down from Canada, but we got a little northern wind. It's cool, the mosquitoes are biting. Let's hope the walleyes are biting too. We're gonna take off, we're gonna see what we can do. Probably gonna do a lot of slip bobber in the day, maybe some Lindy rig fishing. We're kind of in a, uh, a transition here. The water temps are around 70 degrees. We're starting to see some mayflies hatching. Uh, so some of these fish are on the move. They've been shallow, but we're gonna have to be prepared to just adapt and do what we do as fishing guides. And that's the guide life. So my, my story is probably a little bit different than most guides in the industry today. Um, I didn't grow up in a family with where fishing was always available to me. Uh, I was first introduced to the sport when I was six years old at Fall Lake in Ely. So during my impressional years, six to 10, it was kind of my favorite thing to do. I enjoyed it more than even Christmas and Easter. It was our fishing trip, that was, that was my favorite holiday. Um, as I grew older, I was always, whatever opportunity I had to fish, I did, whether it was vacations up into northern Minnesota, uh, trips to my uncle's cabin by Alexandria or Rainy Lake. And basically when I turned 16, it was, now I can get my driver's license and now I can go ice fishing every weekend. I turned 18 and I was like, now I can legally buy a boat. So that's what I did. I, when I fir first had the choice where to live, I chose to go to tech school in Ely. And then when I went to St. Cloud to finish my four year, I was raised to basically the standard, standard adage that you go to school to get a job, that's how you become successful. And the fishing passion always just burned through me. Um, I made a few poor decisions at St. Cloud. I kept trying to become a, <laughs> Uh, and a professional fisherman when I was uh, in school, which is impossible financially. So I sunk myself way into debt. I w was completely bankrupt, had no options. I basically had to get the job and get out. But through the bankruptcy and just kind of the general helplessness of not having any options, I turned to personal, personal growth podcasts and I, I became a fan of Dave Ramsey, Ken Coleman, Patrick Lencioni, and it just became the thing I did. Instead of listening to music in the truck, I'd listen to podcasts when I drove. Um, I took a job, I, I mean, I got my degree in land surveying and traveled around the country and just hammered through the podcasts as I was surveying around the country, just working 80 hours a week and making money. Um, I paid everything off, I bought my boat, um, and then I decided, after listening to these podcasts, I'm like, you know, I'm gonna try guiding part-time. I'm gonna take a, 40, a standard 40-hour a week job, and we'll see what happens from there. And lo and behold, I absolutely love doing it, and I had more talent than I realized as I got into the guiding. So gradually, it, I became more and more busy. I started All-American Fishing Guide as basically based on the belief that anybody, no matter who they are, where they start, can become whatever they want in life, as long as they're willing to put in the work and the time and do, willing to do whatever it takes. And I just, that was every day I'd get up and I'd do, I'd do whatever I could and then I'd crash. And I just developed the habit of, if I'm not working, I'm fishing. If I'm not doing that, I'm marketing to try to bring in clients. And it just took off and grew from there. I mean, it went from two trips one month, four trips the next, eight after that. And I ended up piecing together a decent year when I had a busy October. Um, I decided as, the, as I got busier as a guide, 
that I really, I was in a place where I didn't need to work my job anymore. So I just decided to go for it and do other side, side jobs. And literally two weeks after I made that decision, Jason reached out to me about joining Leisure Outdoor Adventures. And I'm like, I honestly couldn't believe it. I'm like, why does he want to meet with me? I just started doing this. And lo and behold, they had a position up at Lake Vermilion. And I'm like, the most scenic lake in the entire state, arguably the country, great fishing. Uh, don't have to compete with other boats like on Leech and Winnie. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And it, as if there's all sorts of work, yeah, I'll do it. And it just, it was a dream come true. And so far I absolutely love it up here. And it truly is an incredible fishery. I am Justin Cromie, a Leisure Outdoor Adventures fishing guide. This is my life, the guide life. Guiding, while to some people on the outside it might seem like a glamorous thing, it's a lot of work. But every time somebody steps into my boat for a guide trip, it's it's their trip. This is their trip. And spending the day on the water with people, it's just truly it's really a dream come true. It's just a truly special experience. Setting the hook, netting the fish, high-fiving people, and that's truly the passion. Yeah. What drives me is fishing different species and making memories with people. It's, it's a phenomenal thing. And that's what keeps me coming back. That's what fuels my fire for guiding. Every day is something new, and seeing the smiles on people's faces when they catch that personal best makes it all worthwhile. And I love watching kids get addicted to uh, fishing. We are a family. Between all of us, we spend countless hours on the water. And at the end of the day, it's about making sure that the people that were in your boat learned something and enjoyed that experience and made some memories along the way. 31 inches, baby! Woo -hoo -hoo! Chris, you're up. Am I going to get this one, Nick? Get him. There you go. Beautiful fish. Oh, boy. One of my faves. That's a little nicer one. Woo! Yeah! There we go, buddy. Right away! What a beautiful leech like musky, those spots. It's not a super tan. Nice fish, buddy. Thanks. That's a good one. Oh, there we go. There we go. First nice fish of the day. Yeah. On top of these fish, like you said. Here it comes. Here it comes. Come on. <laughs> yeah. That is how you check the leech weight, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> That's the hog in the day. We wanted to go catch a big one. Let's pick it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That was 37. Eight minutes to go. Woo! The Guide Life with Leisure Outdoor Adventures is brought to you by these great partners. You know, Lake Vermilion is nestled up in the northeastern corner of Minnesota, and it's kind of one of those hidden gems that maybe people forget about. You know, there's a lot of major lakes in Minnesota. You got Leech, you got Mille Lacs, you got Winnipegosh, you got Rainy, you got all these different lakes, and there sits Vermilion. It's, you know, it's got over 350 miles of shoreline. It's got 365 islands. It's known for its basically red sunsets. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's a special place. Uh, tons of history when you, you go throughout the lake you can actually see the history in the lake. You know, old, old cabins, old boathouses. Um, you know, it goes all the way back to the days where people were getting shipped around the lake and basically steamboats and, uh, and you know, families who have generational cabins. And it, it's just a, it's a unique place, whether it's the, the topography and the, the geography of things, whether it's the lake, whether it's the shoreline, whether it's the islands, whether it's the, you know, everything that goes along with it. But then there's the fishing. And it's a great multi-species lake. You've got, Buskies, you got walleyes, you got panfish, you got largemouth, you got smallmouth, you got everything. And it, when you throw the whole thing together, it truly is a Minnesota gem. Whether it's the history, whether it's the fishing, whether it's the scenery, you just can't, you know, you can't miss out. It's it's just a special place. And so when you throw it all together, it's it's a place in this state of Minnesota where if you're traveling from afar, you got to put Lake Vermilion on your list because it is truly a Minnesota gem. Oh, 
Dive trick right there, Joel. <laughs> There's too many hats. <laughs> Get a video of a hat flying oh, out. <laughs> Yep, so we just pulled up to our first spot. We're graphing it. On, on this lake especially, it's important to use your electronics and verify the fish are there because they can be here today, gone tomorrow. So right now it looks like we got a sandy bottom and we're just looking. Biggest thing is to use the side imaging to look and see if there's any walleyes here before we start to fish. Maybe this much closer to the North Pole, you gotta dress a little warmer. They're down easy so it doesn't break. So kind of on the rod. Is it raining rod slicks? <laughs> What's going on here? So we pull up to another spot here, and uh, obviously Vermilion's got a ton of uh, rock reefs and rock bars and points and everything, being in Canadian Shield Lake. So we kind of pulled up onto a, just coming off a shoreline here, there's a little rock point with a little rock pile right off of it, so mark the fish. And now we're gonna use the old active target to find them again. And then instead of, since they're kind of grouped up here and we're fishing rocks, which if we fish rocks, we're gonna just get snagged all day long Lindy rig fishing. So we are gonna deploy a good old fashioned slip bobber with a leech, maybe a crawler, maybe a jig. Maybe a, I know uh, Justin likes using a plain hook. I prefer the uh, 16th ounce jig. So we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do here. So basically for me, I like a nice natural presentation. I, I, I literally like it for them to just see the leech floating through the water. So I'm a sucker for the bear hook. Um, occasionally when it's windy, I mean, they say you want to use jigs, which yeah, you definitely want, don't want your leech to get up too high in the water column. But on a stained water like Vermilion, I found as long as you got a weight like six inches above it, they don't care. They'll still bite the hook. So that's my philosophy, right or wrong. Adam. Not feeling all I like. Oh, it is a little Oh small man. Eye. <laughs> Monster. Oh boy. <laughs> Joe, can you make the camera make this one look big? <laughs> Gotta make this one look big. Look at that thing all perked up. Woo! <laughs> this is a good sign though. Hey, this is the future of Vermilion right here. So this could be a 30 incher that one of our guy clients catches one day. So we'll, we'll put that one back. This time I'm not gonna jump in the lake like I did during Guide Wars a couple years ago. It's a little <laughs> chilly this morning. Not sure I would recoup quick enough. But target acquired. It did come up aggressively and hit it, which is a good thing. Now we just got to track down the uh, the bigger ones. But the skunk is out of the boat. You don't have old-fashioned depth bombs, I bet, do you? I do. <laughs> what is this with the... There's an extra weight that came off the bobber here. Sometimes you don't have some... Well, guy trick number one, don't ever watch a bobber because watch bobber never goes down but this is a wing it system so when the one time i ran out of de or, uh, death bombs so i just uh use this little thing now it's perfect you just put the hook through the uh right by the grommet drop her down doesn't fall off justin's already lost one he loses two my great great grandfather gave me that one let's see if i can manage it oh bobber down Be fine. Finally set up. Not a big one. Another. We're on the nursery. Oh. That one's a little bigger. Oh yeah. Okay. These aren't very big right now. Let's send this one back to the daycare. I just got to find the big ones. Bigger. Mine's down. Oh. Give her a little time this time since I missed the last one. Good guy. Learns from others' mistakes. Oh. 
You know. Got Ooh. him. Is this a better one? Yep, this one's nicer. Good. Horseshoe. God, Lake Vermilion fish always feel huge. They, uh, they're built differently out here. Just wait. Big Justin walleye. might have his drag set really loose too because he really likes to savor the fight. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't think this is a little one. Pay attention to the bobber stopper, is it? Yep, I'm gonna have to fix that, but that's all right. We'll deal with that when it comes. That's a good one. All right, Get up just a little bit more if you can. There we go. There we go. Bada bing, bada boom. Nope. <laughs> I got Dude, it 20, ate the look. Four. It was trying to eat the bobber. <laughs> That's a fatty. First nice fish of the day. Plain hook under the slip bobber. I like being subtle with my presentations, and it seems to work. I like to think I uh, gave you that one because I missed it. <laughs> Let's I got that. the learning experience. All right, make sure he make sure he gets it. Yep. We'll make more of you. There we go. Number one. Let's get some more. So, what was super cool about that is with forward facing technology, is we've been feeding all these, these little ones, and then a lot of the little ones are riding anywhere from a foot to a foot and a half off the bottom. And I told Justin they were shining, I was shining around, so I have my active target uh, mounted to my, my vantage. So I'm able to slide around and then the arrow kind of tells you where to where to cast and we were both looking and like all of a sudden pointed it I'm like ooh look at that one and that one was riding about I'd say probably two and a half feet off the bottom mm -hmm. so a lot of times you know sometimes you can fish below fish so with the slip bobbers another little good little tip is actually get it above the fish and make them come up and eat it because that's typically how you're gonna those more aggressive ones will actually come up and eat uh, sometimes you got to put it from their nose, but that one we got it above it and it came in and it crushed it. So nice job, Justin. Yep, thanks. Don't watch your bobber. So yesterday I had a guy trip. And I was telling the guy, he said you can't watch bobber, never goes down. So I said, you might as well get your sandwich out, bring your snacks. Sure enough, first bite of his sandwich, he looks out and his bobber is down. There we go. Big one. Man! Hooked up. Nicer one? Not bad. Probably an eater. Hmm? There we go. Nice fish. A lot of your classes in Lake Vermilion. Nice one? Yep. Well, decent. Like a pow! Just like that. Sharp shooting walleyes. Warm up.
Fish where the fish are. That part ain't rocket science. In terms of walleye production, Leech Lake is best. Trapper's Landing Lodge on the south shore of Leech Lake has the finest lodging on the entire lake. With renowned angling expert Josh Bullivant managing the property, Trapper's Landing is the place to be. Opening weekend and all season long. Fish where the fish are. Stay at Trapper's. Call for reservations 218-836-2500. Stop into Ray's Sport and Marine today to check out our remaining 2022 in-stock inventory or place your 2023 order with guaranteed price lock until September 1st. After September 1st, prices are subject to change, so now is the time to reserve your new boat. From tillers to side councils and full windshield models, we sell them all. Our sales and service team is here to help you get on the water. Ray Sport and Marine, 896 Northeast 1st Street, Grand Rapids, Minnesota. So obviously Vermilion's got a ton of rock reefs, rock bars and everything, and that can be super intimidating for a lot of people. And so in a lot, not everybody has this kind of technology, right? And so what I typically tell people if they're up here, because most people come up for a week and in summer now maybe more novice walleye anglers, is just trust your electronics. When you drive up on top of these, these reefs, which I do obviously take into consideration how shallow they are because nobody we don't want anybody to damage a prop or anything like that but when you come up on some of these reefs just slowly idle over top and if you see life at all if you see bait if you see what looks to be you know could be ba even bass like we've both found like if you see schools of, of smallmouth and other, if there's life on that hump there are probably walleyes there too and so you don't have to have forward-facing sonar to necessarily see that you can just have traditional 2d sonar or down scan and, and and to see any life and if it, especially if it's above the rocks because if it's above the rocks chances are those fish are feeding so speaking of rocks justin what do yep. you what do you got to say yep so one thing i've definitely found this spring is oftentimes they will be hanging around the biggest rock on the structure like if it's a 15 foot high reef and you got a rock that comes up to 12. i mean that's an area they'll key on uh, sometimes when the wind's really ripping through, they'll actually be on the back side of the reef to catch bait and stuff that's coming out of the rocks. Um, and I guess sometimes they're on the front too, but it seems like they're on around the big rock or on the back side of the reef. Yeah, so sun's coming out. It's actually warming up a little bit. We, we'll probably start peeling layers pretty soon. But um, with sun coming out, wind's still up. Okay, so sun's usually good, penetrates. Water temps will start to warm up, and as the water temps warm up, we've had good luck even just fishing yep. at two o'clock in the afternoon. So we're just looking, we're trying to graph fish, find fish. We've seen a few fish here. Uh, we're gonna try to get ourselves positioned, and then we'll we'll keep with this bobber program, keep throwing the swim bait, uh, and just keep mixing it up and try to what looks to be a kind of maybe keeper size fish here. Mm -hmm. But um, there's a nice little spot up in the school of them swimming here close. So we're gonna go ahead and set up on this reef, set up into the wind, cast those bobbers out. See if we can get hit. Bob. That's a 60 footer. Got him. Oh, it's going into your line, Justin. <laughs> get the map. Yeah. I don't know if my drag might be a little loose. I think Justin sabotaged it earlier. <laughs> I think it's just a nice keeper. And not much rod bend. Good parabolic action on this. Oh yeah, that's a good one. About a 20 incher. All right, Justin, don't screw this up. <laughs> Knock it off the line. All right. Boom. Got her. That's Lake Vermilion Gold. All right. Come on back, Justin. Yep. Nice one right there. Ooh, look at her perk up. It's about probably a 20 inch or so. This one's gonna probably have to go back, but man, she's beautiful. So, you know, this is one of the, the perks of being a guide on Lake Vermilion. You get to go out and catch Lake Vermilion gold like this. And uh, this is, I'm going on my, I think my fourth year up here now, and I've been fishing here ever since I was just a little tyke. And Justin's first year up here, what do you think of him up here? Oh, it's awesome. You know, and uh, it's, like I said, it's one of those deals where you get a chance to cover the lake, both Justin and I cover east end and the west end. We're able to work together, break the lake down, mm -hmm. and uh, try to stay on top of things. And it's not easy to do when you have a, a lake that's this expansive and big. But Justin, he does predominantly walleyes, and 
and uh, I guide walleyes and I'll do some bass fishing and even some pike fishing. Haven't quite gotten the itch on the muskie thing quite yet, but yeah, this is what it's all about. I mean, whether it's keepers, whether it's trying to catch big ones, you always have an opportunity out here to do both. And uh, there's trophy potential for everything out here, whether it's bass, pike, walleyes, panfish, and so on. So we're gonna go ahead and get this one back in the lake and uh, let her swim away. That's right where I was gonna go. Good job, good cast. Here we go. Yep, yep. Here you go. Yep, yep, yep. Hooked up again. Little guy. I'll just loop this one in. They are loaded in this spot right now. I got oh, that's her. Not a, that's not a netter. No. <laughs> not a netter. He thought he was big. <laughs> there we go. Back to being a preschool teacher again. <laughs> it's kind of good. We got a spot. We caught a, about a 20, 21 incher. Got to see little ones there. So obviously that just proves that Lake Vermilion is uh, a healthy, healthy fishery. So there we go. Dustin, you want to move and hit the net this for uh, oh, yeah. net this for me? It feels keeper-ish. Yep. Good one. Just letting her marinate out there. Uh, got her. I got it. It's a little nicer one. This is about the perfect one, along with that one I caught earlier. Right there. Beautiful Lake Vermilion Gold. And it's gonna look really, really good at shore lunch. You believe her in the jig yet, Justin? What? Are you believe her in the jig yet? Oh, uh, we'll see. Oh. Well, sometimes jigs out produce the, uh, <laughs> Looks a little bit, but no, I, uh, on a serious note, like Justin mentioned earlier, sometimes the hook, when it's a little windy, will float up. It's not as natural. That's one reason why you could put a split shot or something a little weight above it. Uh, but then there's days where that jig, just a little bit of color. This is just, I use different ones. I use about a 16th ounce jig and uh, whites and blues, oranges or chartreuses, nothing too crazy. Pinks can be really good out here sometimes, but that jig, I think just that little bit of color kicking around in the, uh, in the wind is sometimes the ticket. You just gotta go with what they want that day. And I think I need Justin a new... kicked my butt the other day with a hook and I had a jig, so win-win. I even tried a bigger leech this time. Reed. That one's a little better. Jeez. That's when you know they're biting, right there. <laughs> Look at that thing. Chowed it. Last one, I think, for shore launch. That'll be a good one. We'll have plenty. Obviously, you want to be con you know, good conservationist. And Give me my leech back. Give me my leech back. Give me my leech back. These are like... A dollar a piece of leeches right there. I don't want to lose that. But yeah, no. Oh, we're gonna throw that one in. That's probably about 13 incher. Oh sorry. Doot. <laughs> Got him. Yep. Decent one? Uh I think the drag's a little loose. Yeah, it's it's pretty small. Hey though. Yep, jig. Off the schneid. Got humbled a little bit today. The jig is definitely better today. Little guy. Put little that guy. one back. We're out here today and we've got this Maluna unhinged cooler. 
made in the USA, made right here in Minnesota, and this thing is absolutely amazing. Last thing we want to worry about in the morning is making sure that we have enough ice in the boat. We know that when we fill up our Maluna on the start of the week, that towards the end of the week, we're still going to have cold ice inside of there. Oversized handles, they're lightweight, easy to haul around, plenty of room, and these things are top notch. You want a cooler that'll keep ice for several days on end, these Maluna unhinged are where it's at. Reed's Family Outdoor Outfitters is the number one ice fishing headquarters. We have everything you need from today's firearms to the latest fishing electronics and the hottest footwear and outdoor apparel. We only carry the best brands at the best prices. Have a question? No problem. We have the most knowledgeable team in the business ready to answer your call personally seven days a week. Whether you're visiting us in Walker, Minnesota or touching your screen with our state-of-the-art distribution center, we can get you gear when you need it fast. Cast or blast? Reed's has the best service, best advice and best price guaranteed. Meg? Yep. Yep. I'll get that. Yeah, ready. Better one. I don't know if it's a giant, but that was a heck of a hook set. <laughs> it sounded giant right away. Look at that rod. That is a sweet rod right here. Uh, well, she doesn't want to come up very much. Oh, that's a big one. Are you ready to go there, Netman? Oh, yeah. I was born ready. You're not sleeping in the camper tonight if you don't get this thing in. <laughs> not worried about it. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Get it. Get it. Get it. Not ready. Get no, it. There. Boom! <laughs> Got her. <laughs> nice. Yeah, right in the corner of the mouth, too. Tell you what, one quick thing, I gotta say it because they sponsor me, but Two Brothers Innovations, Sharpshooter Bobber Rod. You just saw it right there. Handle the head shakes of a nice big vermilion walleye. I tell you what, man, this is what it's all about, man. This is, you come to Lake Vermilion, okay? It's not a giant, it's probably about a 24 incher, but I tell you what, man, this is what it's all about, Justin. You mm -hmm. come up here, you can get to do a guide trip with us, you can check out all the scenery, all right? Everything that the vermilion has to offer, great fishing, awesome resorts. Man, it's got everything. Man, it, this is this is a truly a Minnesota gem. So come mm -hmm. on up, we'll take you fishing. We'll try to catch a few of these and a few of them for the old fish fry. So which we are about to go do. We got a short lunch ahead of us. Stay tuned, man. There you go. That's what it's all about. You know, you come out here and Vermilion can be really intimidating sometimes. There's a ton of structure out here and not all structure holds fish and that's where you got to trust your electronics. Even traditional 2D sonar can show you a lot. And so my advice, drive, use electronics, pull up on these different reefs, shoreline breaks everywhere where you see some life, whether it's bait or other fish, stop and fish, trust your instincts. And then from there, what we did today is we just bounced around we, and we just went from place to place to place until we saw life, we saw life, we marked, we threw our bobbers out, watch them go down, set the hook. It's really not that hard and uh, 
yeah, that's just the process. You know, you come up here, enjoy it. That's what it's all about is, uh, is chasing fish down and, and just trusting your instincts sometimes. So when you get a chance to release fish like that, it makes it even better. So my passion for guiding started um, shortly after college. Uh, I, I always, for me, it was always the goal of at some point in my life, I got to get a 30 inch walleye. And I was ice fishing on Lake of the Woods. I saw the huge mark show up on my graph. And I was like, that is the biggest wall I've ever seen. And I essentially, I said a prayer. I'm like, God, do whatever you wish with my life. I want to catch with this fish. I want to catch this fish. And then once I got into the 30 club, it was a 30 and a half inch or 12 pounds, just a beast. Um, I'd, I'd accomplished that goal. And for me, after that, it became, I want to help other people join this club. I want to help other people catch their biggest walleye ever. And I just want to create experiences for people that will last a lifetime. I mean, we really get to, I mean, we're, we're kind of spoiled as guides because we kind of get the high of a lot of people's lives. I mean, they're on vacation. Oftentimes we get to treat them to the best fishing they've ever had. And just seeing, seeing how much they enjoy that and how much it means to them is just, it, it just cuts at my heart a different way than, any, than a standard nine to five job. It's, it's something I love to do and at the end of the day, as I, don't, I don't need a ton of money as long as I can make ends meet. Guiding is my passion and that's what I will do because I, I love to make an impact in other people's lives and that's the way that I have it. That's the way that I seem to have the ability to do it. This is a toad. Oh, a big one. Nice and easy. Got him! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, man. Suspended one. That is a toad. <sighs> we are going to keep that one in the water. I think it came up fast. Yeah. Literally, we're in 10 feet of water. That thing was about six feet down. Mm -hmm. Justin and I both noticed it. Justin put the, uh, the hammer, hammer down. First. That a boy, man. <laughs> that is awesome. Like, all right, team effort here. I'll pull that net out of there. Yep. All right there. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in here, Justin. Get down no. here. This is your fish, my man. <laughs> that is awesome. Back. Man, I tell you what, Lake Vermilion Gold. It doesn't get much better. Like, that's what it's all about. You mm -hmm. get a chance to catch these. People come up here for a week, all right? If they get a chance to put their net under one of these, and we can help them with that because we're guides out here. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, come on up, enjoy Lake Vermilion. We got resorts, we got beautiful scenery, we got beautiful Lake Vermilion walleyes, a little bit of everything up here, and you're gonna love it. Come on up and come fishing with us. Leisure Outdoor Adventures, Lake Vermilion. Awesome. I really don't have a ton to say. I mean, it's it's incredible. I, I almost, I've had a streak of over a week with getting overs for like getting an over every day, over 26. The, the numbers of big fish in this lake, either, it's insane. I honestly did not realize how great Vermilion was until I came up here. I, <laughs> Permanent horseshoe. I've, I've kicked his butt today, <laughs> numbers wise. But I tell you what, I, got, I think you got, I mean, the first one, I'm pretty sure it was 26 over or over, and then you go ahead and catch a 28 and a quarter, and I mean, hey, what do you do? Big fish, Justin. <laughs> Man, what a great day. I mean, A, we caught a bunch of big Whacked fish. <laughs> caught keepers, caught big fish. Well. Got to spend the whole day on Lake Vermilion. B, enjoying a great shore lunch here this evening, a little dinner, wrap up the day. And look at that. I mean, awesome. if, 
There's not a lot of places in the state of Minnesota you can go and see this and enjoy a shore lunch, which is one of the things that we do from time to time for customers if they want. And uh, you talk about a way to wrap up a, a guided fishing trip. It's, this is it right here. You know, fresh fish, all the works, maybe even a special dessert, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and more importantly, sit and enjoy this. You know, and that's why people come to Lake Vermilion just to relax and enjoy the pristine wilderness and the great fishing and everything that I had. And we had an awesome day. Would you mm -hmm. agree? Yeah. Awesome. You know? So um, we're going to wrap things up here, but we do have a couple, three questions that came in via Facebook. And the first one, I'll go ahead and answer this one, is um, are we using plastics to jig up in the shallows? We actually tried that today. Yeah, you'll see it on the show uh, as well. We tried some paddle tails and we had a little bit of success. Mm -hmm. I think it's something that we're probably going to try some more. Yeah. And it's something that maybe we can try with our customers. So. There's that. Uh, Justin, um, what subtle changes can increase your chance for hookup? <laughs> so definitely today, switch into the jig with the uh, choppy water just to keep the bait down versus a bear hook. The bear hook was likely floating around and I noticed into our trip that Jason was catching more fish on the jig, so I ended up switching it up. <laughs> so that was Tommy Lee and then I answered Buck. His question, and then the last one's a pretty big one, but I think it really pertains really well to Lake Vermilion. It says, this is from Ryan Mose. What is your strategy or approach for planning or leading into a fishing trip? And what indicators do you look for to identify what the current bite is and how you take those indicators and when you look at a map? So I think can, what can be really important when you're coming to a place like this is number one is gonna be time of year. You know, so typically what's going on, where the water temps like. So you wanna ask those questions, what are water temps like? Uh, are any bugs hatching yet? Mm -hmm. um, you know, those indicators. Pay attention to the weather. You know, what, what kind of, you know, are we getting northerly winds, westerly winds? Uh, but then as you look at things and you start looking at a map, Vermilion is expansive. I think we looked it up last night. It's 37 miles from west to east. Mm -hmm. And I think we might've covered all 37 miles today. Pretty close. And, then some. <laughs> and, and so what I, my advice to you would be, don't get overwhelmed by looking at the whole map. Would you agree? Yeah. You know, and, and more importantly, try to focus in on what area of the lake you're staying and so you don't have to run all over the place and try to pick out those kinds of things. And understanding early in the year, like you found out, fish were shallow, mm -hmm. right? So if you come here in you know late May, early June, fish are gonna be shallow as the water temps warm and the bugs start to hatch, which is what we're starting to see now. Those fish are gonna come out and move towards the transition areas. So your rock and your mud or your sand and your mud. Yep. And then as we get into the middle of the summer, they're gonna start to set up more and more on the reefs mm -hmm. and some of your mid-lake structures. And then as the fall comes along and the water like temps cool, Lead core time. Lead core time, which is awesome up here. Mm -hmm. You get into August, September, uh, and then they, as those fish get shallow, the jig and middle bite can be really, really good too. So, yep. you know, when you look at those things, don't get overwhelmed. I would start small and imagine picturing uh, a lake like Lake Vermilion and breaking it into smaller lakes. Uh, mm -hmm. Vermilion's got all these arms and different basins and bays like Fraser Bay, Norwegian Bay, Wake'em Up Bay, Head of the Lakes, da you know, Daisy, Big Bay. And, and look at them as like individual lakes. Mm -hmm. and, and then from there, you kind of branch out and, and kind of see where you can go from there. But otherwise it can be way too intimidating, I think for a lot of people when they look at the map. So, yeah. but yeah, those are some great questions. Um, what do you think, Justin? This was your first time doing a guide life show. <laughs> pretty awesome. Yeah? Yeah. Well, Justin was Definitely the all-star enjoyed today. it, so. So, <laughs> catching big fish, big fish Justin. Yeah. You know, <laughs> BFJC, that's gonna be his new deal. Uh, but yeah, most importantly, we wanna obviously thank all of our fans uh, make sure that when you when you watch our guide life shows, you uh, hit that subscribe button on our YouTube page and mm -hmm. share it out with your friends. Uh, we're trying to make content, and if you got great ideas on things that we can do to make our show better, we want to hear that. So uh, we're gonna sit down, we're gonna enjoy dinner, and uh, we're gonna sign off. And more importantly, we also gotta we gotta feed our camera guys because they did a stellar job today. So we got fresh fish for them. We got this in the background. Um, this is how we're gonna end the day. And more importantly, Justin. This is the guide life. Yeah. Leisure Outdoor Adventures would like to thank all their sponsors for their support in making the guide life happen.